Hi, this is Craig. I'm going to show you how to make use of the Web Branders, a new action set from craigsactions.com. This way you can protect your images, promote your business whenever you put your images online, especially if you're going to be putting them on Facebook. So, once you've loaded the action set and you look at it, you'll see that you've got a variety of different things through here. We've got some information text. We have a trainer action. When you run this, you'll get some pop-up instructions which will walk you through how the actions run uh, and explain some points within there. We also have uh, down here, we've got various web branders that make use of no sharpening. So there's no one sharp mask applied. If you have sharpening as part of your production process, you don't need to do it for your final output. I have my sharpening turned off uh, and I do it as my final step for output. So the with sharp on are the ones that I'll be making use of and this will apply sharpness optimized for the web uh, as you go to use it. The three sets, or excuse me, the three actions that you have within here, we've got our text, we've got our logo vertical and our logo horizontal. Let's look at the text one right now. Very simple. When you open up the action, uh, and we go down, we'll see that we've got our make text layer. So when we run that, that's going to run a default text, just uh, saving the uh, with the copyright held by photographer. You're probably going to want to put your name or your studio name in there. So let's show you how to do that. Before you do any changes to an action, I always recommend that you copy it and you can take the action, drag it onto the icon with the folded corner, and it'll create a copy of that. Now when we open that up and we double click on our make text layer, you can see I've got my studio name that I put in there. You're probably not going to want that. So all you need to do once you've double clicked on the make text layer, and it's come up through here, just to highlight the text and we'll put in your studio. That way it works for everybody. We still got this set through here. You can see how it's recording. And so I'll just click on Make Text Layer again. It turns off, the recording stops, and it goes to the beginning here. And we've now programmed that text into there. So once we've done that, we'll want to go in and rename this action set. And we'll just call it the Custom Text Unsharp Mask. So there we go. We're good there. And now we'll go back to our beginning and you'll notice as well within the history palette that you've got these stages. You've got a before and you've got an after. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more about those later but it's a very handy feature to have. So let's take our action, we'll run it and now it's coming up and it's asking us where it wants to save. So what we're going to do, come into our storage area, go into our dump files, we're going to create a new destination folder for where we're going to save our web images. So we create a new folder. And this is the same thing on uh, PC. I'm just working on the Mac. So watermarked web outputs. So we've got that there. Do that and we save it. Now we've saved it within there and so our image is good to go, ready to send off. So you can see we've got our all rights reserved by studio, by your studio that we put in there as we customized the text. And you can change that at any time, uh, again, just by simply clicking on that make text layer. Now, we had to save it individually. If we want to program that, in terms of the save step, you'll notice that this dialog box is toggled on. So that means when it's on that it's going to stop and say, hey, I need you to tell me what to do here. So when we double click on that, we're going to reprogram it just the same way as when we did with our reprogramming of the text. So we created our folder in the last step. So all we need to do uh, is within that it's got all set to save. We've got our default settings here. You can turn on the color profile, the icon, and the thumbnail if you want. They're just, just going to increase your size of your web image. So if you're trying to keep it lean and mean, you can just leave these off. But go with your default settings. We'll click save. In this case, we're just going to replace it because we did that before. And our JPEG level of 8 is all that we need for the web. Uh, and we click OK. So now when we open that and look, you can see that it now knows where to put that image file. Uh, so it's got that destination programmed into it. So I'm going to turn off that save step because it's just going to run right through and it knows what to do. 
And just to uh, prove through there, we'll run, press play, and all good. Now, once it's gone through there, we can make use of our layers here. And if we want to move that around, we can take our logo, even drag it on, create an additional one, move that around there, have our different opacities set up. Uh, we can move that as little or as much as we want. Some of the handy parts about having this separate uh, logo layer all set up for us. So here's our original image. Now let's look at making use of the logos. So close that. So now I'm going to make use of the logo horizontal. It's a horizontal image, so that's what we're going to do. And if we open it up again and we look, there's an open step which is going to say, hey, where is your logo? The logo for these actions, you want them to be a maximum of 170 pixels wide or 130 pixels tall. Because uh, it selects it and places it automatically. There's not a sizing built into the action. So, what we can do, we can press, or excuse me, start there and say, where's your logo? On mine, I have my logos set aside, uh, nice and neat, with all sorts of stuff here, and we're going to go to these ones. So, logo final there, and there's a blog logo, 170 pixels. It's placed it on there. I'll show you that in a moment. And now it's looking for where to save again. We'll just skip that because I showed you that in the last step. So here's my image with our logo. And there's our before. And there's our after. Sorry if you're getting a little seasick on the zooming here. But we've got that uh, readily available. And again, we can take that logo. It's at 80%. We can make it less. We can make it more, right through to 100%. So we've programmed our logo uh, into that. Once we've done that, because it now knows where to look for that logo, we can toggle off the dialog box. That means that it won't stop there anymore. And I showed you in the last step how to save it. So uh, that one we've dealt with. Now that we've got that done, you want to make sure, you want to prep your logo so that you can make use of it within this action. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's go down to one of my logos here. So we've got a logo which has got uh, built up and it's about 500 pixels so it's too big. I've got my background layer so I can see what it looks like. We've got a few things going on here. Uh, first thing we're going to do, let's uh, also open up, we'll open up our recent blog logo. And we'll get rid of all of that and we can see that we have our logo over a transparent layer and with that turned off. So um, our top layer is active. This is what I want it to look like. So let's go back to my studio logo. Now I don't want to have this background stuff. In this case I've got the glow so I'm really making use of the transparency. If you've got a solid logo that's fine you can just uh, use that as well. But So we'll take this and we did our little stuff so I'm just going to merge this down. So we got there, we'll call that logo. And now I'm going to select all, copy, go down to my sample logo that came with the set and paste. And of course it doesn't fit. So we'll just go edit. We'll come down to our transform and, uh, I'm sorry, image, where am I going here? Edit, transform, there we go, and we'll scale. And we're going to resize this so that it fits into this sample logo. And that's pretty good there. So we'll just click OK, turn that off, and we see we've now sized our logo to match that. So the sample one, we drop that in. And I would just take the extra part I don't need. Let's call this logo. And so we're good there. And then we'll just do file, save as. And let's just be lazy and throw this on our desktop for now. So we've got our blog logo. And we'll just call this Aura. Blog logo, 170 pixels. It's always good to put that in there. 
We've got our layers intact. It's already an sRGB file. and We'll click Save. So now that we've done that, let's go back to our image. And we've got our uh, logo that we're going to program into here. So this one made use of the Craig's actions. So let's just type on here that we're going to have put in CA for CA logo horizontal and just as I showed you before let's take that duplicate it so I've made a copy of this action above it and before we forget let's go in here and we'll change this to aura and we'll spell it right aura logo horizontal so that's good there now we're going to go in and we're going to look for that logo. I was lazy, I put it on my desktop uh, as opposed to in my logo file, but we'll just double click on that, go to our desktop, and there's my logo that I just created. Size that there, it's opened it, and if I look at that you can see that it's looking to the desktop and it'll show right through the Aura blog logo there. So let's go to our image and let's go to our starting point and we've got things set we've got our save step let's just program that one as well again I showed you this earlier we go into our watermarked web outputs we've got our default settings here and we place through there we program that so it's good to go so I turn off the dialog box next to that save step. I've turned off the dialog box that was next to the open. So this one's been programmed and is ready to go. Let's test it and see what happens. Press play and we're golden. Look at that. So we've had our logo apply itself uh, in our right hand corner there. Uh, we showed you how to make use of some of the text customizing, how to create, resize uh, your logo to match the sample that's supplied, and how to program that into the image itself. So very simple, very effective, and good luck and enjoy yourself on Facebook with uh, happy images that promote your business and protect your image at the same time. Take care.